All right, real quick. So most pet owners use food with the dog, which is bad because its food is very hard to do properly. What it tends to do, usually, let's be blunt, I guess, and, and with my language. And most pet owners are too soft. They're too weak with their dog. Uh, they're a little bit lazy a lot of the time. <laughs> just, I'm just gonna say it. I'm not gonna look for euphemism. Um, and they're really bad with the disciplinary end of things. So food can, I think, exacerbate whatever pre-existing relational issues might be present. So it's bad for that reason, but that can be corrected assuming the person is motivated to help the dog, right? And it's, which isn't always the case, but uh, most people I deal with are well-intentioned and, and they, they, they do a good job of changing. So there's a relational component to food, but the big problem is the execution with it. That's the bigger issue, and, and people tend to use it as a distraction. They keep the food in their hand, okay, and they just, they don't let the dog make a choice. So it creates lore dependency, which, here, let me get rid of Elvis real quick, this I should have done that before I started the video. Here, Elvis, go in here. Oh, I'll go. Go. Quick. Damn. Damn, come here. Damn, get up. Damn, get up. Good boy. Fam's, uh, I might even do this with Fam after because he's so good. Um, sorry, quick commercial break there. So, anyway, you're going to get stuck in a lure. And a lure, all it is, you put a piece of food in your hand, and you're just manipulating the dog around in the position, it's just like that. Up, up. Now, luring's fine in the beginning. And you, like, but it's very easy to get stuck on it immediately. And I would estimate anywhere from like two thirds to like 80, 90% of the dogs come in. Highly transaction. You tell them to sit, they're staring at your hand, man. It's a big, big problem. So really the best solution for owners is to probably just stay away from food. There's a lot of different ways to teach dogs basic positions without food. Food is, for trainers, if you know what to do, it's an excellent tool, but you have to know how to do it, okay? But here's a very, very simple drill anyone can do with their dog to avoid that kind of lure dependency. And if you've already developed it, and again, lower dependency is like this. Sit, and you go like that, and the whole time, they're not looking at you, they're looking at the food. Like, you should be able to Oreo, sit. Good boy! And you should just do it, if he knows it, you know? Um, so like, to break that, you know, or if you want to use food to, to do it properly, you should really get them off food very, very quickly, like one, two, three days max, and then you move to toys. But um, this is sending them to place. It creates an active dog where they're figuring out they got to go away from you to get their reward. And it's one of the most basic fundamental drills I do with all dogs. Because um, it involves a, some degree of problem solving. And it's a fun game with them. So I, I, very simple. I'll just show it to you. Or right, please. Yes. Okay, and I'm just going to increase distance over time. I've done a couple of videos on this, but I'll show you without tools, nothing. And I have the treats in my pocket, okay? So I'm just gonna give a kibble now. Oreo, please. Yes. And really, I should just be able to say it without any body movement. He's not that good. <laughs> he never will be. Oreo, please. Yes. Isn't he cute? Look, you know, I'll just add, gradually add a little more distance. And if he needs a little help, I'll give him a negative mark, and I'll say nope or uh-uh. And I'll give him a little bit more help with this, my body language, like kind of hints, you know? Oreo, please. And then what I'll do is I'll come back out and I'll, he'll have to come over here to get the treat. Oh yeah, place. Oreo, nope, place. Yes. So smaller increments. I, I put too much distance there. Okay, buddy, ready? Oreo, place. Yes. So we'll do it like six inches at a time. Anybody? Oreo, place. Yes. Another thing, a big problem people do with food and just training in general is they speak and move at the same time. Watch, there's like a half second pause between me saying, Oreo, place. Yes, and then giving them a hand signal. Yes! Okay, so, do you see that? It, because if you move and speak at the same time, it gets lost. 
they're predators. It's all that's also not how classical conditioning doesn't work like that. For I'm not getting into why, but just don't fucking move and speak at the same time. Speak, go one one thousand, then move. Okay, Oreo, place. Yes. See how much, how I actually waited a full second there and see how much clearer it was for him. It's that little distance. Oreo, place. Yes, it's getting good. <laughs> He's so cute. I <laughs> hate you, Oreo. <laughs> Oreo, place. Yes, great job. Getting close to like 12, 15 feet, about 10 or 12 maybe. Oreo, place. Uh -uh. Place. Get it. Place. Good. Oreo, heel. Yes. I know, fam. Oreo, place. Get it. Yes. Good boy. Very good. Now let me show you fam, because he's really good at this. This is getting a little too long and boring, but fuck it. Because I like, I want to give fam a little something. Come here, buddy. Because you like to fuck when everyone gets a pretty. Okay, fam. Come on, little no car sucker. Go ahead, buddy. Bam! Fam loves this game. Bam, heel. Ah, uh -huh. supposed to be good, fam. Good boy, fam. Place. Nope. Place. Yes. <laughs> fam. Place. Yes. Fam. Fam. Place. You're supposed to be good. You're doing kind of a shitty job, though, buddy. Okay, ready, buddy? Leave it, leave it, leave it. Fear me. Place. get the e-collar is great to do with the e-collar drill. Give them little taps, you know. In the beginning you do it um, without a leash, without an e-collar. Uh, just it's a no pressure drill in the beginning but he, he gets it. He's just kind of like distracted right now. So that negative motivation at a real low level it, it works really well for this drill. Uh, the e-collar in particular. Where are you going from? Yeah, heel. And then once they get good with recall Fam, place. Yes. You can go heel, place, heel, place. And then you do a uh, you switch to a variable reward schedule. Here. Good. Fam, place. Fam, heel. <laughs> yes. You need to be a little tired. Fam, place. Yes. Bam, place. Bam, heel. Yes. Bam, place. Bam, heel. Bam, place. Bam, heel. <laughs> Bam, place. Cute 
fucking dog. I love Pharaoh, man. He's a real good student, too. Hey, where you going, you cute little fuck? Him and Oreo, this is, this is a good game for them. And these are pets, you know? Fun little treat game to play with your dog, man. You know, so if you want to use food, do this drill. <clears throat> um, and it's a great way to break lore dependency. So, um, try it. If, I mean, really, actually don't. <laughs> if you're just like a dog owner, uh, if you're going to be stubborn and give them treats and shit, you, you got to work this in. Um, but you're better off like playing with your dog, using like tug and stuff like that. But this is like an interactive food game. Awesome. I do it with all the dogs. Easy to do too. All right. Uh, all right, that's it. Where'd you go, fam? Fam,